uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew. There's four of us going to play that. Let me just um, reset this. Uh, so there's four of us going to play Bridge Crew for a little bit, just to try that out. We picked it up today. And then we're going to play Human Fall Flat, just to wind up, uh, wind down. Probably wind up a lot, let's be honest. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's the whole thing. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, well, how much Bridge Crew, how much Human Flat Fall Flat we do will be dependent on how much... Um, uh, of the uh, of bridge crew that we end up doing. Hey Rob, welcome, ro welcome, 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 welcome to Rob's viewers. Um, but I'm partly distracted, and the reason that happened is because I'm um we had another rogue device, which I think was my son's iPad, which wasn't in the bandwidth filter that was slamming the connection. Uh, and I'll refresh your resub announcing in a minute, BMJ. The coffee pot's already out, Glen A. Go. Assuming we're talking about the same coffee pot. Right, this game is restarting. Um, and also, uh, courtesy of Farmer JP, there are four copies of Human Fall Flat up for grabs. Me falling flat asleep, yeah, really, Fab Diva. Sometimes it seems like it. Well, the, uh, we seem to be going from sort of a green to a light green at the moment, so what, I think I've managed to uh, limit the amount of damage Cameron's uh, iPad is doing to the network. The USS Hopeless. Is that right? Is that right? Right, now let me choose the correct scenario. Bridge crew looks really interesting. It, it's a fascinating way of doing it. Hey, CS Rail. Yes, I play Euro Truck on a Wednesday. A uh, mix of multiplayer, single player. But yes, we've played quite a lot of, of Euro Truck over the years and ATS. Uh, right. What is Bridge Crew? So four people get together, multiplayer, and basically they they crew the bridge of a starship. It's uh, very cool. Uh, I've forgotten all the startup sequence on this thing. Rough on. Doors open. Can't wait to get rapid transit, Oliver. Nice. Nice. Yes, yeah, so a bridge crew looks really interesting because each person's got very clearly different things to do. You've got one helmsman, one tactical officer. Uh, good point, BMJ. I'll do that in a minute. Uh, you've got one captain and you've got. Um, uh, science officer, here yeah, engineer. Sorry, engineer, who's looking after the, uh, you know, where the power goes, where the repairs go, and all the rest of it. It's uh, really interesting. Um, anyway, uh, let me just uh, repeat on that once it comes out. There we go, BMJ Epic. Who you have some spads on the table tonight? Do you like the stuff I got you? Certainly do, BMJ. In fact, I've lined up kingdoms and castles for Tuesday. So that's the first one. So BMJ picked me up a, a few different games over the Christmas period. So much appreciated. Uh, and in fact, Rob Powell uh, bought me Rob um, uh, Bridge Crew today. So if you haven't picked up Bridge Crew, it's 50% uh, off today.
No, I've missed a step here somewhere. Oh, that's better. All right, time to go. That's what I thought she said, Sierra Trail. Yes, Oliver, this is track hire. Just tidy this up. Am I speed up yet? Not yet. Oh, there we go. Right. I was having a look at my VR headset earlier on and I realised that the wires were wrapped around the radiator which is now on. Right. I'm very good Ben, thank you very much, how are you? No, I don't know what you mean. Obviously a pacer, Oliver. Obviously a pacer. Uh, ben, I'm good, thank you. So we are going to Jaijin, Kangzhengzhen, and Sining. Gerard, resub tier uh, second month. Thank you very much, Gerard, 444777. Much appreciated. 
stuff you can do on here. Stuff you can do in Chinese, yeah, really. And then shows on the side of the load. Hey, look at that. There's D5012. D5102. After all that. Better. Oh, now we've got destinations coming up. That's quite cool. That's quite nicely done, that. You think my PC might need moggy proofing? Say that, Citra. How do you turn off DSD? I don't know if you can. Guns, is there ever trouble on the tracks? So different routes and have different experiences. High speed trains like this, they are generally, uh, I mean, just because they want to keep the trains running high speed, the networks try and keep them clear. Um, but um, some other stuff you'll find that you get held up at red lights all the time. So the next scenario I'm going to do, apparently there's, there's lots of holds ups the entire way. But no, this sort of loco on this or train on this sort of route is generally all about going as fast as you can. I would, but I can't remember the key, Big Betty. I did it yesterday and I've got no idea what it was. Constant on, there you go, that's what we want. says D5102 over there as well. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, F4. Yeah, see, that's the old, that's the master key sequence, Moggy. That does everything. I'm inclined to find the not cheat code. Right. Well, my cup of coffee is already getting cold. That doesn't surprise me, Oliver, because it doesn't take much of a ground shake for the, um, the flange to come off the uh, rail. Hey, Simulator Daz. Yeah. 
42 kilometers to our waypoint. Forty-seven kilometers to our first station. Okay, try pressing Control D or Control F in Dennis Castle and see whether they do anything. This train can only do two hundred and fifty to train guy. Yeah, as soon as we get out of the tunnel and I can see them, I will uh, give you a quick controls walkthrough. This is uh, a fairly limited loco because it's, it's the Chinese ones are, sorry, the high speed locos generally are um, quite purposely, they uh, there's not a lot to them. But let's wait until this comes out. Longest tunnel ever. We should turn the headlights on. There we go, let's go with that, shall we? Guns, yes, it's PC only. Although Train Sim World, the um, the other one in the series, is coming out on Xbox at some point. Crikey, this is a long tunnel. Going through a mountain or something. Yeah, so on the left is your throttle combined, your throttle brake, yeah, sorry, your throttle. On the right here is the brake. And the one to the right of that, I think, is a reverser. Try raising a ticket with Dovetail, so thank you for the answer, Pendennis. we've got in this cab so we've got some computer systems on the left we're doing various things I don't know this cab particularly it's like brake pressures on the dial there emergency brake stop button the middle screen there we've got the speed and uh, speed limit and next signal aspect uh, on the right hand side we've got current speed got train status indicator route that we're on um, that's basically it for this trailer like I said there isn't a lot to it
Is it on the Javelin uh, Pendennis Castle or is it one of the other trains you're looking for specifically? Twenty kilometers. Hey, I'm Jack Master. York controller got trained in for Christmas. So much to learn. Remember, remembering running your own laptop. I think that's to ask for a gaming computer for your birthday, though. Nice. It's the inevitable dinner crash. Right. Let me just uh, turn the camera off so I can stand up for a minute, stretch my legs. Oh dear. I need to get standing desk, don't I? That would make a lot of sense. Oh, 8.9 kilometers. So has anyone here played Bridge Crew yet at all? speed away from the yellow end stops. <clears throat> uh, so with Fennekin, you don't need VR for a bridge crew anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be running it without VR tonight. I've got VR, but I'm going to run it without VR. I tried it at work today. Actually, I don't see anything wrong with them doing that at all. Seems to have converted back to being a 2D game perfectly well. 2D, it's still obviously 3D, but it's uh, on a flat screen. 
You never heard of it, Ben? Do you like Star Trek? Oh, here comes the speed down. Star Trek, we can't be friends. <laughs> I did one solo mission at work at lunchtime just to see uh, how I uh, how I get on with it, get you sort of familiar with the interface and. Uh, no, I agree, Farmer JP. I think twenty quid actually, it's 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 good. It's a good buy, but at forty quid, no, it's not a forty quid game. Except we need to be doing 50. I'm under 50. Or is it 40? I can't actually read it. It's 45. Oliver, uh, 66 is straight after this scenario. It looks like a cracking scenario as well. Yeah, I bought the, uh, when I installed the um, bridge crew and had a look at it at lunchtime, and uh, I made reasonable progress, and then I got my backside whooped. It's the first time we'll have shooting on the stream. I do wish they wouldn't keep doing shooting in Star Trek games. Except for Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, because that was amazing. I was going to say, Rob, there was plenty of shooting in the bit that I did. In fact, that was basically the goal of it. <laughs> you love the optimism or get close to firing a weapon. <laughs> No, you can trust a Klingon, they have honour. It's Ferengis you shouldn't trust. They have no honour.
90 limit as we pull out the station. No Man's Sky. It has got shooting, but I've never done combat in it. I just use the mining laser for mining. It's right too, you know. Did anyone here play that Star Trek Bridge Command? Long time ago now that one came out. But I enjoyed that one as well. Klingon Academy. Not heard of that one. One hundred and fifty. Hey, Dex Final, how you doing? Put the camera on in a minute. I'm just suffering like I normally do at the beginning of a stream. <clears throat> One day I got a better sensible time. My favourite Trekiverse game was um, Star Trek Armada, particularly Star Trek Armada 2. Armada was amazing. I liked Armada because it was it was a good accessible RTS, very reminiscent of sort of Command and Conquer style approach. Um, thoroughly in the Star Trek universe, but um, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, face cam will be coming back soon. Don't you worry, Moggy. Moggy would have it no other way. Oh, I've got to sit down now so that I can. Turn that on and put that on. Really, you don't like the new Star Trek? I'm really liking the new Star Trek, Metallica. Really liking the new Star Trek. I'd like to watch the Orville, but I can't. I, don't, I can't get that here, Britannica. Well, I think it might be on Sky. It's certainly on Now TV, but I don't have any either, either of those, so I can't watch the Orville. I do what I want to, but maybe at some point in the future. Hello, four hundred seven two. I can take or leave the new Star Trek movies.
There it goes. Kang Shang Zhen. That's a slow down. See you later, Oliver. New Star Trek films make no sense. They're all contradictory. They should have carried on with TTNG or VOG film or something that carried on with the true timeline. Totally agree. But the problem is that these days, uh, I think writers and film producers, and I'm going to be controversial here, I think they're getting a bit lazy. And it's easy just to reboot. Than it is to actually learn about the um, the, the geekery and the uh, the canon and um, do something respectful of the canon. It means it, it creatively limits them, so it's it's better for them to uh, do their own thing, which I don't like. Don't like at all. It's like I, I don't mind the Star Trek movies. I take them or leave them, but you know they're um, I wait till they come out on um, Netflix or something to see them. I don't I don't really go and watch them. Whereas that sounds really odd to me. If you'd have told me, you know, 20 years ago, when this new Star Trek film comes out, you won't be that bothered about waiting for it, and you'll wait for it to come out. And that would have just not computed for me. I would have been queuing at the cinema to go and see it. The entire TNG cast is up for another film. Nice. <laughs> oh, dear. That would be cool. Star Trek Next Generation the Retirement Home. <laughs> I do like Discovery a lot. I do. I think the um, the fresh take on how you how you tell a Star Trek story is absolutely brilliant. The next next generation, <laughs> Star Trek: The Last Generation, or the previous generation. I haven't seen Civil War yet, pinned in this castle. <laughs> another one I'm waiting for it to come out on Netflix and I do quite like the Avengers films but just again retirement on Ricer yeah the one I'm queuing for next though is Ready Player One Ready Player One is where it's at. That looks so good. There aren't many films in a year that I will uh, um, you know, really make the effort to go to cinema and see, but that's definitely going to be one of them. You wanted a TNG Mirror Universe one. The Mirror Universe is good. I really liked how in DS9 they really reveled in the Mirror Universe. Because I, I, it wasn't that long ago that um, 
I um, I hadn't even seen DS9. I'd watched like the first two or three series and just lost interest in it. Um, and given you know it's on Netflix and I binge watch rubbish on Netflix, that's why I'm always tired when I stream. You know, tr the truth comes out. Um, then um, it was. Um, I just decided, you know, I finished, finished watching a bunch of other stuff. You know what? I've not actually watched the whole of DS9. So I watched the whole of DS9 and watched it in a fairly short amount of time, considering how long it is. And um, it was absolutely epic. It is by far my favourite of the Star Trek series now. But I think only because you watch it quickly. You know, if you watch it one episode a week, you miss a lot of the nuances in the plot. Whereas if you watch it, you know, like a series of time, you don't so much do that. course at this point I'm trying to avoid talking about that um, Star Trek Discovery because I don't know who's seen what and I don't want to spoil anything for anybody but suffice to say I'm really enjoying it Voyager had beautiful title music didn't it Stubby yeah No, I don't agree. Deer Stone was a rip-off of Babylon 5. There, there were some subtle differences. And they end up going in quite a different um, direction in the end. And to the point that they settled their differences and started appearing on each other's show. And Babylon 5, to this day, I've not seen the end of. Because it's, it's not gone into any, like, uh, any of the on-demands, like Netflix or Amazon, so... They both ripped off NASA Skylab game first. Yeah, Skylab and Crossroads were both out before Babylon, Babylon 5 and uh, DS9. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> you. Yes, he did, Rob. Uh, Jakar was definitely in um, TNG, and um, he was in DS9 as well. Uh, Stubby, did I see the new Star Wars? Yes, I've seen the new Star Wars. I went to the cinema to see that and basically came out thinking, hmm, well, it was a movie, <laughs> and I wasn't disappointed, but I wasn't gushing either. But I'm not a Star Wars nut, to be honest. I'm Star Trek. Star Trek's my bag. Good evening, Mr. Chris. How are you? And how is your uh, much better half? TNG was, was good, but I can't really handle the first couple of series. They're hard work to watch again. It asked, asked more questions than it answers. It was just gibberish. <laughs> and I've, after after being bitten by Lost, I'm afraid I don't watch things that ask more things than they answer. That's good to hear, Chris. Send her all of our regards. We're all hoping she gets well, well soon. I need her to come back and keep you under control. <laughs> I've not seen the new MST3K, Fab. That's more my wife's thing. She likes MST3K. I've not seen it. Because it's Joel, but it's Joel again, isn't it? He's the one who originally created MST3K, if I remember rightly from what Sarita was telling me. Or was Joel the second one?
Joel, Joel is producing, right? Yeah, I'm really hoping that at some point Babylon 5 makes it onto one of the um, on-demands, because I, I don't desperately want it enough to go and pay to watch it. But if it appears on Amazon or, Bab or Netflix, then I will watch it. Because I only got... Um, basically, I watched all of it up until it actually started warming up. It actually, the, the events they were talking about started... They started talking about the events that, you know, they started happening. I remember... Um, the Vorlon and um, the other one I can't remember what her name is the the one with no hair like me um, and sort of the bony the bone the bony crown um, the um, yeah she was um, that that was the kind of they were getting together and it was like you know it's about to happen I saw a, a odd bits of it um, and that was it so. No, at some point I do want to watch the whole thing again, and because uh, it was good, I was really enjoying it, really enjoying it. The real dogger. Hi Matt, how are you? Keeping up the great work? I am indeed. Thank you very much indeed, the real dogger. Fifteen months. Wow. Thank you very much for your support. You got all the uh, series on DVD plus the movies, yeah. V was amazing, Gav. V was amazing. The movie, well, the TV movie thing was amazing and the whole TV series. I loved V. Delenn, that's the one that I was, the name I was trying to think of. Arriving at Soining, 30 kilometers. Glen Ego, I love Battlestar Galactica. It's only Battlestar, it was Galactica 80 that was the cheese fest. Battlestar Galactica, the original, was fantastic. Um, Galactica 80 was okay, but it was kind of, yeah, I just had to take it with a pinch of salt. It, but it was amusing if you watched it and just enjoyed, enjoyed it without worrying about it too much. Um, but the um, the reboot was very good, um, and then they completely lost their minds, and it went strange. And they did sort of manage to rescue it in the end, but... Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Yes, Britannica. I, I watched the film when I was younger so many times. Erin Grave was not anything to do with that reason. <laughs> But then the TV show as well was really good. I used to watch, yeah, so that was another good show. Biddy, biddy, biddy. No, I think it's Siam. No, I didn't see the Shadow Wars. I think that was when what was about to kick off when I stopped watching it. <laughs> Cylon, by your command. What came first, Knight Rider or the Cylons? I'm just, just curious. <laughs> And did Kit go evil in the future? Or really, really in the past? Or is Kit a Cylon, given that the Cylons appeared right, you know, way early in our history? 
Is Kit actually the remnants of a Cylon? It would explain so much, wouldn't it? Rob, in a Suzuki? Hey, Malyris. You're going to once again build your spaceship. Um, what are you building it in, Malyris? Galactica 80s was pretty good. Um, it was, like I said, it was entertaining. Yes, there was a Cylon in one in 18 episode, yeah. Babylon 5 was a very good soundtrack, wasn't it? Yeah. Whereas Deep Space Nine was yeah, a bit fair to Midland. Fourteen kilometers. Make me kid! Throwing bits in a bucket is now my idea of a good Friday night's entertainment. How things have changed. As you get older, your expectations go down, don't they, Bait Minkid? <laughs> Thank you very much. Some a good weekend this weekend. No darkness. I'm going to my parents as normal, but I'm going to try and get Friday off next week um, and make next weekend a uh, sudden nautica weekend. We have a small speed change coming up. Yeah, it's not out until Tuesday. And I want to wait until it's actually out because I don't think they're going to actually finish, put the finished version up so you can finish the game until Tuesday. With the rocket launch sequence and all of that good stuff. Oh, the Cylons were a proper good um, bad guy, weren't they, Chris? Proper good. I can do English, me. I make up my own language. Where we, where I'm going, I make up my own language. Can't be a bit of the War of the Worlds, can you, Dex? And Fab. I was quite surprised actually. I didn't think I would enjoy the re the the remastered version of War of the Worlds because you know what you can't you can't improve on perfection. Turns out you can. Apparently we kind of dropped down to zero. <laughs> Dex, no, I haven't been to see War of the Worlds at all as a performance. I need to take my mum because she'll enjoy it as well. Please describe your truck movement methods. Darkness. So what that is, is that it's not perfection, therefore there's plenty of room for improvement. And when I say plenty, I mean truckloads. That's not dropping, I thought it was. 
Yeah, there is a new Pacific Rim film. It was actually advert. It's sort of kind of been trailered via a Microsoft advert for the Surface because apparently the woman who coordinates stunt locations uses a Surface tablet. It's, it's an important thing to know. So Oh, here we go. Speed's coming down. Oh, I see. Now the emergency's trapped and that's it. I can't. Nothing I can do about it. You're claiming truck abuse after Wednesday shenanigans. <laughs> it's going so well, and then I looked over to see what was going on on chat and didn't pay attention to the fact that I was now breaking the speed limit and this thing is not tolerant. It's completely intolerant, in fact. Hashtag def, def, definitely blame chat. Or blame Moggy, one of the two. Pacific Room was okay, but I'm not that bothered by the sort of those kaiju type thing movies. Oh, all of a sudden dropped to 45 limit. It's very confusing. Things seem to be overlapped all the time. It's like there's a duck in the computer system, isn't it? Same old recycled excuses. It's not a excuse if it's right. Oh, I wonder if you can release the brakes by pressing the emergency brake release button before you stop. I'd just like a new MechWarrior game, Britallica. VR Mech Warrior game. Yeah, my dad's got the original on vinyl. I've got it on CD because, you know. And the new gen one I just listen off Amazon. Yeah, I saw that, Metallica. There was a uh, tech demo for a, a, me um, a mech type game on um, on the Oculus Rift site. I think it was uh, before when yeah, before the Rift came out fully. It was amazingly good fun. They really nailed the feeling of you know being in a mech controlling this thing, this big beast. But they kept it accessible and quick and easy. So it was you know it was really good actually, really really good. Without feeling like Titanfall. <laughs> There's definitely a duck trapped in the engine. On the bonnet, the cab. Who trapped a duck in my train? An official mech warrior for how many years has it been since an official mech warrior game? Long time. Yeah, well, I prefer the other soundtrack for the new gen deck, so that doesn't surprise me. Right, you finished your job successfully and gained 260 whole points. Don't spend them all at once. Right, I'm going to restart the game because the next scenario is a white mead scenario, which means memory abuse. <clears throat> That was successful. I got everybody there, and only half the passengers were probably injured a bit. Mm -hmm. 
waiting for track IR and of course it's already loaded. Twit. Twitius Maximus. I just realised why well, my coffee tastes weird. <laughs> I didn't put a new coffee tab in there. So this is the same coffee tab I used yesterday. Actually, it doesn't taste that weird. It doesn't taste that bad at all. <gasps> you can get twice as much coffee out of a stack of coffee pads. Ooh, dangerous revelation. I put milk in it, Darkness Monster. Oh come on, game! Look at look at what I have to deal with, hey! Look at what I have to deal with. So we are going to be on, I think it's North London line. It might be the Goblin line. It's one, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, this is Whitemead scenario. It is um, a Class 66 hauling um, car train. Excellent. Seems to require me to start the game twice every time I want to start the game now. Maybe I should clear out the 3,000 scenarios I've downloaded from Workshop. I'm tempted to wipe the game entirely and just reinstall it so that it's not got any of this rubbish on it. Cars by Mr. Whitemead. <sighs> Let's put another coffee on, and this time I'll actually remember to change the uh, coffee pot. 